Hi, I'm Daniel Souza and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is problem set 4. Here's the first problem. Problem 1. If a minus b is equal to 3 and a square plus b square is equal to 29, find the value of ab. Alright, now for the first sum, they've given us a minus b is equal to 3, a square plus b square is equal to 29, and they've asked us to find what is ab. Now to solve the sum, you need to know the property a plus or minus b square is equal to a square plus b square plus or minus 2ab. Now if it's plus, here it becomes plus. If it's minus, here it becomes minus. Now this is one of the standard formulas that you need to memorize. Alright, now for this one we use a minus b whole square since they've given us a minus b. So a minus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab. Right, minus here, so minus here. Now, now we just need to substitute the values that have been given to us. So a minus b is 3. So 3 square is equal to a square plus b square, we know, 29, right? So this thing will be 29, right? Because of this, minus 2ab, right? Now, we take minus 2ab this side and 3 square, that is 9, on this side. So minus 2ab, when it comes here, it comes plus 2ab. This is 29. This is 3 square is 9, but when it goes on the other side, it comes minus 9. So minus 9. So 2ab is equal to 29 minus 9, that is 20. But they've asked you to find what is 2, what is ab. So now ab is equal to 20 by 2, which is equal to 10. This is your final answer. Let's go on to problem number 2. Problem 2. 15% of what percent of 582 is equal to 17.46? Alright, now for the second sum, they've said that 15% of x% percent of 582 is equal to 17.46. So what is x? Now, the way you do this is write the percentage in terms of what it really is. So 15% is 15 by 100. Right? 15 percent of x percent. x percent is x over 100 of 582. Right? So you close this, close this is equal to 17.46. So if you just remove the brackets, it's multiplication, right? So it becomes 15 by 100 into x by 100 into 582 is equal to 17.46. Right? Now, now what we do is we take everything this side and just keep x on the left hand side. So x is equal to 17.46 into 100 into 100, right? Both the hundreds come on top divided by both these terms come below. So 15 into 582, right? Now, now what I'll do is I'll move this point by two spaces. So I need to multiply it by 100. So I'll erase this 100 and I'll remove this point, right? 17.46 into 100 give me 1746. Now it becomes easier to simplify. Now, uh, divide by 5. 5 3s are 520. 3 1s are 3 5s are 2 8 2. 582. 582. 582. So it implies x is equal to 20 or 20%. This is your answer. Let's go into problem number 3. Problem 3. In a ratio which is equal to 3 is to 4, if the antecedent is 12, then the consequent is? Alright, now for the third problem, they've given you that the ratio is 3 is to 4. They've told you that the antecedent is 12 and they've asked you to find what is the consequent. Now, these terms might seem a little unfamiliar to you. So what I do is I solve it with the help of proportions. So I write 3 is to 4 is the same as A is to C. Now, A is your antecedent and C is your consequent. Now, if you just substitute it, it becomes 3 is to 4 is the same as the antecedent is given to you, that is 12, is to C. Now, by the law of proportions, we know that the product of the extremes, right, it is equal to the product of the means. So, we know that 3C, right, 3 into C is the same as 4 into 12, that is 48. So, C is equal to 48 by 3. 3 ones are, ones are 6. Implies the consequent is equal to 16. Easy, right? Let's go into problem number 4. Problem 4. How long will it take a sum of money invested at 5% per annum simple interest to increase its value by 40%? Alright, now for the fourth sum, they've said that there's a 40% increase in the final money. With the rate as 5%, what is the time that it will take? Now, 40% increase, that means if I would have invested P, that's my principal amount, at the end, I would get 1.4P. Right? This is 1p, 
1p will become 1.4p. That 0.4% increase is 40% increase. So what is the extra amount here? This can be broken down as 1p plus 0.4p. Right? So this is your new money. This is your old money, old money plus your SI. So now you know that your simple interest is 0.4p. So now if you write the formula for simple interest, PTR upon 100, right? SI is 0.4p is equal to P. Time is not given. Rate is given to us as 5 divided by 100. Now P and P you can cancel out. This is 0.4 into 100 is 40. 5 we take down and this is equal to T. Implies P is equal to 8 years. This is your final answer. All right, so this is problem set four. If you found this video helpful, do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd also appreciate it if you tell your friends about it and help me reach out to as many students as possible. Cheers. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to get access to all my videos. I release new lectures every Thursday. Cheers.